And as a scientist, I have the privilege of attending to evidence. And when something looks strange, I want, I would like to discuss it, uh, point it out, because that's the only way by which we might recognize that among the rocks that enter the solar system, there might be a tennis ball that was thrown by a neighbor. And uh, that would be the most important revelation to humanity ever, because we might realize that we are not at the top of the food chain within the Milky Way galaxy. And if there is someone more accomplished than we are, perhaps it will inspire us to do better. Because right now we focus on a very small rock that makes uh, maybe three millionths of the mass of the sun, that's Earth. But there is much more real estate far out. You know, there are 100 billion stars just in the Milky Way galaxy, and there are about a trillion galaxies in the observable volume of the universe and many more beyond what we can see. And so uh, it, there is a sense of cosmic modesty that, that we lack. But if someone else far out in another uh, near another star launched uh, another type of uh, uh, spacecraft we would not be aware of the trajectory that is supposed to take and therefore we would uh, uh, if we are subscribing just to the notion that there are space rocks uh, out there we would say it's a comet or an asteroid and that's a mistake that is easy to make if you have very limited data even if you see gas and dust around an object it doesn't mean that it's a natural object because you don't judge a, a book by its cover. It may be just the skin of the object that collected ice and dust along its journey and uh, has nothing to do with the interior. Uh, and uh, uh, it's not at all clear because the human species existed only on the, over the past few million years. That's uh, a tenth of a percent of the age of the Earth, uh, and not to speak about the ages of other stars. And a journey takes about a billion years throughout the, the Milky Way galaxy. So uh, whoever sent uh, equipment in our direction didn't have us in mind. And it, it's sort of like arriving late to a party and thinking that someone uh, was waiting to dance with you. I mean, that that is a ridiculous notion. Those are objects to be discovered by the Rubin Observatory in Chile. Now, with respect to this one, what we learned recently is, uh, well, at first, the reason I suspected it might be technological is because it, it, its trajectory is aligned with the planets in uh, moving around the sun. And the chance of that happening at random is one in 500. And what we are seeing now is that indeed the, this anti-tail that it had from the beginning, which is a jet coming from the object towards the sun. It seems to persist. Even now, we have a second image from the Hubble Space Telescope that indicates a jet coming from the object towards the sun and not away from the sun, the way cometary tails behave. That's an anomaly. We need to explain that to understand that. In fact, as of this morning, there was a report about the jet uh, wobbling as if um, it's sort of like uh, the the light beam from uh, a lighthouse uh, uh, that is uh, wobbling. And uh, we need to understand uh, wh why this happens. It extend in the, This anti-tail extends to a million kilometers. We've never seen anything like it for any comet. I think NASA is a bureaucratic body. And um, the press conference they had was handled by officials which I would think is not the best approach to disclosing interesting information. You want the scientists who work on analyzing the data from the Webb telescope, from the Hubble telescope, from other NASA assets. But we didn't see those in, at the press conference. And frankly, the officials just uh, released uh, fuzzy images that were not particularly exciting. So it was a disappointment for the public. Uh, and uh, at the same time, we had some images from amateur astronomers that were far more informative about the many jets coming out of uh, 3A Atlas. So I don't think NASA would uh, purposely hide information, but I do think that their heart is not in the right place, which is let's uh, focus on the science, admit what we don't know. Uh, and they didn't really. Uh, discuss any of the anomalies that I mentioned. There is another anomaly that is uh, this object is shedding uh, uh, mostly nickel with very little iron. And um, uh, the only place where we find that is in industrially produced nickel alloys. Uh, usually all astronomical objects have comparable levels of nickel and iron. And uh, that is a surprise and perhaps related to some uh, technological makeup of, of the object. Um, so they should have discussed those things that we don't fully understand, like the anti-tail, 
the nickel versus iron, the fact that the object lies in the plane of the planets around the sun. And, you know, they could have said, look, these are not uh, explained. Uh, they may be just the uh, rare properties of, of an object that uh, we are lucky to, to find in our backyard. Uh, but they should have admitted what we don't know and what we don't understand because that's the truth. You know, science is work in progress. And the only reason we want science to be funded is in order to find answers to questions that are mysterious, uh, like, are we alone? And you can't excite the public by tampering down uh, the, the the most interesting uh, anomalies and saying it's a comet and basically telling the public what the public should believe. Um, now, we don't know if that is a result, this mass loss is a result of a natural process of uh, uh, pockets of ice on the surface of a rock that get uh, sublimated, that get evaporated by sunlight, or it could be thrusters in a technological device. But uh, if we measure the speed of the gas in, the, in that uh, anti-tail in the jet, uh, and um, we infer the composition of that uh, jet, we could figure out if it's the sublimation of ice uh, that propels it, that launches it, or maybe something technological. Because for uh, chemical propulsion uh, in rockets, uh, we usually get uh, speeds that are uh, an order of magnitude larger than you expect from uh, pockets of ice warmed by uh, sunshine. Uh, and uh, for ion thrusters, we get a 100 times faster uh, exhaust speed. So uh, just by observing these jets, I think we can pretty much learn about uh, what, what the nature of the object is. Well, uh, we definitely care about that because um, if there is a visit by alien technology uh, to the inner solar system, you know, we don't know if we're dealing with a friendly visitor or with a, a serial killer in case they, they decide to visit Earth. Uh, and that would uh, suggest a, a whole uh, plan associated with planetary defense. Uh, right now, we're thinking only about rocks that by chance happen to impact the Earth, like the asteroid that killed the dinosaur 66 million years ago. But in principle, if you have a technological device, it may maneuver and might have an intent for the visit that is much more difficult to protect against. And uh, 